Hi guys, welcome back. Today I want to do something a little bit different. I've been collecting comics for uh, a little bit of time now um, and I've collected a bit of sort of knowledge in that time as well around the different kind of um, sort of formats, binds, ways to collect, things like that. Um, and I thought it'd be a good time to start sort of sharing that knowledge back with you guys. So the first video I'm going to do just now um, is basically just on the different sizes of the books. I want to just do a little bit of a comparison between the different kind of books overall sort of sizes and um, especially the general ones that I've been sort of collecting um, and just show you guys as I say how that kind of compares. So let's just get on with it. Alright, so let's basically start with the smallest. So first we've got here is, this is just uh, Angel Issue Zero, but this is a, a single, um, or floppy, whatever you want to kind of call it, um, just a single issue you would buy from your comic book store. Um, and I just want to kind of start with this one overall. So it's kind of quite thin overall. Um, if we're talking about um, trim size of a book, we're basically talking about the size of the interior page. So in the uh, single issues, your outside cover is the exact same trim cut as the inside. Um, so the trim would just be, as I say, basically the outline of this sort of red section here. I'll maybe just grab my little stand here at the side so you can see that. Um, and there's a say, comparing next to that, um, we would have what we call a trade paperback. Now, a trade paperback is basically the single issues collected together, typically in a sort of glued flat kind of bind across the, the bottom of the book itself. Um, and again, you have the same sort of trim, so it wouldn't be any sort of bigger um, or smaller than the overall kind of single issue itself. Um, you can get trades that are hardback, um, but as I say, that would be considered a different kind of format overall. Um, trade paperbacks, um, as I say, come as collected single issues, or they can be what's called a graphic novel, which means that basically the story was always written to be in the larger format, um, and it was never released as sort of single issues. So if you ever see people kind of throwing around the different terms between trade paperback and graphic novel, that's the difference between a collected um, sort of uh, soft cover, or as I say, if it's, a, a, you know, originally that was its original kind of form. Moving on from the uh, trade paperbacks, we go to a hardcover, just a regular hardcover. Now, as I say, what you'll find with most hardcovers is that the cover itself is larger than the trim of the book. So the book is sort of connected inside on the, the kind of spine, um, but it's actually kind of, it's, it's not sitting against the bottom edge on your shelf. So um, it is kind of hanging, if you like. If you look in here, you can kind of see, as I say, there's a kind of a, a gap at the top and bottom. So despite the fact that this is a slightly taller, if we compare these two together, overall kind of book, the inside of the actual pages, um, if you imagine this kind of kind of lifted up, um, actually kind of takes up that same exact kind of page size. So that's basically, as I say, all of the standard sized editions that you kind of get. Um, that applies to most sort of uh, US comics um, and anything um, kind of going through basically the big distributors. I mean, the, the biggest kind of things all have that same kind of size. It means it fits on the shelf together, it all kind of somewhat matches up. Um, you do get exceptions to that. Um, I wanted to show you just a, a slight exception to that um, that I've actually picked up recently. And that is this, the Fearsome Dr. Fang. Um, this book's trim size is actually slightly bigger than some of your oversized hardcovers. So if you were to compare this even to the hardcover here, you'll see the paperback is significantly larger than the hardcover and it runs right to the edge of the, the kind of book. 
So as I say, that's more of an exception um, than the rule, but you do get trade paperbacks that are larger than the, the standard kind of print. Okay, the next kind of, I guess, standard that you get across the board is the oversized hardcover. Um, now, as I say, this isn't a huge kind of step away from the sort of smaller hardcovers, but the biggest differences that I notice here is that you get a, a larger overall kind of trim, and typically this is when we enter into more of a sewn bind. The thing you'll notice is that when you open a lot of the sort of smaller hardcovers or um, sort of glued bind trays is that you really have to fight them to open them. I mean, even this right now, I've read this like three or four times and you'll notice that this book doesn't even want to lie flat. Um, you know, all the individual kind of pages kind of curve more because they're essentially fighting the, the glued kind of bind at the bottom. And they just, as I say, it's not the greatest experience. So if you were considering sort of say upgrading from a trade to a regular sized hardcover, I'd probably just stick with the trade because you're not actually going to get any better a quality experience. Whereas, as I say, if you take the uh, oversized hardcover, so let's again just compare the sizes there quickly. So you'll notice that the trim size is a little bit kind of bigger overall. As I say, the hardcover is not the trim the paper inside is, but it's still significantly kind of larger there overall. Different hardcovers have different kind of uh, spines, so you will end up with some of your oversized hardcovers having completely glued spines, um, some of them have kind of partially glued, partially kind of um, sewn, and some of them are pretty much fully sewn. Um, you'll notice the sewn ones a mile off because when you open your book, um, the binding itself lifts up with the pages away from the actual spine of the, the book itself and you'll notice your pages lie a lot more flat. So if I kind of place this one out just now in comparison, you'll notice I say that page just literally fell flat, right? And again, the same thing happens with any of these pages overall. They just lie completely kind of flat out. No issues. And then what I was saying to you there is to say if you look inside the actual kind of spine area, you'll see there's a kind of curve. The curve is basically, as I say, the, the sewing of the actual kind of bound itself coming up with the pages away from the overall kind of spine. And that allows the pages itself to lie flatter out and they're not fighting each other to kind of sit in place. Um, so it just makes for a lot better reading experience overall. Um, so this is the, the first point, as I say, where the actual reading experience really improves. You can make the pages as large as you like. If it's a glued spine, you're still going to be fighting that somewhat, no matter whether it's a hardback, softback, whatever the case may be. But as I say, with the oversized ones, a lot of the time you get into a, a sort of sewn bind. Um, so it is worth, as I say, checking that out and seeing those kind of upgrades. Um, I would recommend checking out review videos of any kind of books you are looking to pick up before you pick them up because I'd be really disappointed if I personally paid for an oversized hardcover and found that it was glued down solid. Um, you do also get the occasional omnibus that's like that so it's really kind of disappointing if that kind of happens um, and I wouldn't want you wasting your money either. So it's always worth checking that out first um, but you'll find that usually it stays the same with kind of creators. So I've bought about five or six kind of oversized kind of hardcovers of a brewbacker and they all have decent spines. Um, so it's, you know, it's one of those things that you'll, you'll find is kind of continuous in a range. Um, another book that I've done a lot of things on recently is all the sort of Rebirth Deluxe books. And again, even though those are a lot slimmer than this, they do have a sort of combined spine and it's sort of partially glued. Um, and it still rises a little bit, so it's still much better than the trade experience. Um, and that's why I would personally wait for the for the kind of hardcovers. Um, so, as I say, this is the oversized kind of hardcover there. Let's rearrange this a little bit now. Okay, so the next thing for hardcovers um, is the sort of the larger kind of print sizes. Now, I found that different publishers or different writers like to have um, these sort of larger books. 
Now, depending on the individual publisher, they might do different things with that. So some of them, um, mainly sort of dark horse, um, call them library editions. You tend to find with Image that uh, Reminder's books are usually the ones that are the, the sort of larger size. It still fits fine in a Calix shelf, just if uh, you know, so you're worried from that kind of perspective. Um, but as they are much larger scale, so it might not necessarily fit in a, a sort of backpack. Um, or anything like that if you're taking it back and forth to work or school or whatever you're kind of reading your books So that's worth kind of considering overall and um, the bigger they get as well Sometimes the wider they get so you are getting into sort of almost omnibus kind of territory um, But it's still um, kind of running Standardly through the run and um, that's something else I'd like to mention just a little bit at this point is pretty much everything up to this point here would be the issues through the run and maybe a few extras. So you don't get um, usually sort of hardcovers or um, sort of oversized hardcovers that are like a creator book, or not as often anyway. Um, so where you get those omnibus that are missing like two or three random issues because they weren't written by Jeff Johns, um, in most of the hardcovers you typically just get the numbers. So you'll get like issues 1 to 20 and then 21 to 40 or something like that. You won't typically miss out on issues the same way that you do sometimes with creator named kind of omnibus. Um, anyway, getting back to this, so as I say, there's a couple of different companies name them different things. So um, as I say, Dark Horse typically call them library editions. You might get it still called an oversized hardcover or just hardcover by image. And um, when you go to um, further kind of things out there, you might get sort of like complete editions, ultimate editions, um, or even sort of DC's sort of absolutes which is essentially this, just in a, a sort of hardcover box that it slides in and out of, um, just for extra fanciness. Um, the book trim size, I'm pretty sure, is pretty much the same kind of size, give or take. Um, so, to show you, see, so this is a, a Buffy Dark Horse um, library edition, um, and to sort of compare that again back to the regular sort of trade, you'll find that it's... Uh, significantly different sort of trim overall um, and then even taking the oversized sort of hardcover again you are gaining still quite a significant kind of amount of page over that so if there's particularly a book that you really want to see the the art and um, one that I've got is I believe Tokyo Ghost um, and that again looks awesome in its massive kind of size um, and as I say it's it's worth doing it, it's worth reading them like that and um, it's just not going to be as portable. Again as I say with these books you tend to find that the bind is really good. Um, these particular um, Dark Horse ones all have a ribbon as well which is really cool and um, so you don't need to carry a bookmark or anything around and again as I say these things kind of lie out really well if they've got a, a decent kind of sewn bind in them so you find that again the bind just lifts up really nice. Alright so the last type of book I wanted to cover is the Omnibus. Now as the Omnibus are a little bit of a, a kind of midway or difference, um, I guess, between all of these kind of books because they can kind of fit into everything and nothing sometimes. Um, the main thing that I find with Omnibus is that they are complete something. Um, so either it's a complete um, this writer on a run, so as I say, you might have, um, say, 50 issues of Aquaman, but issues 3, 9 and 25 um, were either crossover issues or written by somebody else, in which case they just include the rest of the run in the book and they miss those issues out. Um, that would be like if it's done if it's like a creator's kind of book. Um, what you'll get if it's more of an independent book is typically all the parts of the run together. So like in Sleeper here, you actually have um, Point Blank, Sleeper Season 1 and Sleeper Season 2, all as one kind of complete book. Um, and there's nothing missing there at all. Um, in fact, there's an extra issue from a crossover in the back, which is really kind of cool. Um, you find with Omnibus as well that you get more and more extras. So the bigger the books get, the more extras they tend to put in the back. It's things like, um, you know, sketches, um, scripts, 
ideas, you know, letter pages, anything like that. It can include, you know, different kind of things in the, in the back of the book. And that, again, depends on the creator, publisher, you know, what they kind of want to do there. Um, personally, I'm not so into the scripts or the hugely long-winded stuff. Um, I would rather save, save this, the, uh, the shelf space for the actual content of the book. Um, you know, I'm quite happy to have art and sketches and sort of, you know, concept stuff, but I'm not, as I say, so into like huge long-winded scripts or, or sort of page-by-page page layouts. It's a little bit much for me sometimes. Um, but see, that's the, that's the main thing with Omnibus is it all kind of comes together. You tend to find the trim size with an Omnibus is the same as an oversized hardcover or a standard oversized hardcover. So to take Incognito here and pop this in front, you find this is exactly the same trim size overall as the Omnibus, just the Omnibus is a bit wider. Now, as the Omnibus can literally get as big as a binding can, can hold as far as the amount of pages are concerned. Um, so see, this one's somewhere in the middle um, and reasonably kind of manageable, I can kind of fit that in my, in my hand. Um, but if you look at some of the uh, sort of larger ones, ones like um, Ex Machina, Doom Patrol, uh, the new Why the Last Man, um, the uh, New Avengers Volume 1, um, stuff like that. Um, those books are pretty massive um, and you couldn't really read it on your sort of on your lap um, in a chair. You'd really have to put it on, on a table. Um, so again, that's something to take into account if you're going between the choice of having a, an oversized sort of hardcover or an omnibus is where you're going to be reading it or, or what your experience is going to be. I get this looks great on a shelf, um, you know, with a massive spine and a nice kind of graphic and what have you, but it might not be the optimal reading experience for you. Um, and as I say, I find for me, the smaller omnibus, so anything up to this sort of just just over, um, as I said, what is that, a couple of inches maybe, um, sort of size, um, or as I say, the, the sort of oversized hardcover, um, I do have some libraries, as I say, for Buffy, or if that's the only way the, the hardcover kind of came, but that wasn't, as I say, my, my personal kind of choice. So I hope this helped, you know, just to let you guys know basically what these different kind of formats are, how the kind of binding typically kind of changes, and sort of the you know, amount of pages and size of pages kind of compare with that. I'll be doing a few more videos um, along these lines over the next sort of few weeks. Um, let me know if there's anything else that I can, you know, maybe explain or, or help you guys out on. As always, share this video with your friends, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one, and I'll see you guys next time.